public needs to know that people are safer today than they were 10 years ago. It's a safety and security net that doesn't exist in, I don't think, any other state for as broad a group. It certainly didn't exist in New York for as broad a group. So I think it's, that's critically important. I really can't even imagine a system without the Justice Center anymore. They seek to understand your system. They work with the people on the ground. They come in and they do educations for staff. They give people that don't normally have a voice a voice. I really think it improves service. I think it's been a great, great boom to families. I've been in the provider world for nearly 15 years, and I could see all the great work that was being done. And I loved being in the, in the service industry. But there was definitely some bad actors. We could see that someone would be let go of one agency, and then within a week, we'd see them working down the street at a different provider agency. I think the idea and the serious, serious ramifications is somebody could move from agency to agency and perpetrate bad things on kids or adults and not be picked up by the, the oversight agencies is very scary. People call us for a variety of reasons. And I think when resources, including investigations, are only local or regional, people might lose track of who to go to for help. And I think being a statewide presence is huge to folks that just might have seen something they don't know what to do about or might need help. It's hard to have your own people who are providing you care do the investigation. So the idea that outside people would come in objectively, I think it gives uh, vulnerable people more of a voice and their families. I know in Region 2, 50% of our uh, staff used to work at facilities, right? So they grew up, especially early in their careers. They are committed to getting investigations right and that we take a lot of time and effort to make sure that we're doing a very professional job. Upon passage, uh, I had the honor of uh, being uh, nominated by the governor, confirmed by the Senate as the chair of the advisory committee. The other unique perspective I have with the Justice Center is I'm also a parent of a disabled individual who was served by OPWDD. So I have the parent view, and I can assure you that being a professional in the field, running an agency, understanding government trends and data, all gets kind of pushed to the side when you're a parent. The Justice Center is more than an abuse and neglect hotline. When people think of the Justice Center, they think of investigations and prosecutions and the hotline, and that's a really, really important part of what our agency does. But similarly, I think the fact that we're focusing so much on outreach, support, advocacy, and prevention is really important. And I think the more the people are aware of that, the more they take advantage of resources that we have on our website. We have an incredible, experienced bunch of staff that are dedicated to getting investigations right making sure that people are protected, identifying people that should not be working in the system, but also getting people back to work as quickly as possible. This is one of the most mission-driven places I've worked at. Everyone I work with, they didn't come here just to get a job. They came here because there was something that drew them here. We're a national organization. We are contacted by other states all the time about mitigating abuse and neglect. I share the website for the Justice Center all the time because it is a model, it's a national model. It's incredible to see how much we've accomplished in just 10 years, and I'm excited to see what will be like 10 years from now.